Okay, what we're going to speak about today, about COVID, or somebody even doing sport, you know, health and wealth. Okay, we are going to speak today how to make money. It doesn't matter for us if we have COVID, no COVID, uh, who is today president of US, doesn't matter for us. We need to know how to make money in any conditions, okay? And we are going to, to, to share today with our experience in different fields uh, in real estate. And also uh, Cherry Chen, probably people know who is it, will join later. And she will going to speak about um, taxes and real estate, about corporations, how to use corporations to, to reduce taxes and different other stuff. She's my accountant and she's very, very knowledge, knowledge accountant. Um, I will start from a little bit story about myself. Uh, probably most of the people who is sitting here know me, but um, I, I was a software engineer and probably a lot of people who is sitting right now working full-time. Raise hand who is full-time. Okay. All people is in, in the black uh, screen. I cannot see hand, but they, I don't know, can wink. Okay, I was software engineer and I worked in very good position. I worked in Blackberry. Probably some people still remember this company. And uh, when I start to work in this um, position, everything, okay, everything is done. I found a very good job. I can work till my retirement. But, you know, nothing permanent in our life. And also during when, when I started to work, it was in 2008, I think I started to work in uh, Blackberry. And I understand it doesn't matter how much money I make, 50% going somewhere. Who is familiar with this situation? Yes, for taxes. And I understand if you'll continue to work for paycheck, it will be never be independent and financially free. And I start to look for different way how to make money. I look for different seminars. I read a lot of books. And um, around 10 years ago, I was on, on uh, not webinar, it was seminar, it was before COVID. Even one year ago was before COVID, but 10 years ago, for sure, nobody knows what is COVID. Probably it was SARS at this time. And um, I found a way how to make money with real estate. It for me was something new because I'll never, never invested for, in real estate 10 years ago. And if somebody will ask me to invest, I'll say, why I need to invest? Why I need to buy properties? Why I need to rent? I didn't understand what is cash flow. Uh, I, I did calculations. So I'm receiving $100 per month. For this one, I need to invest $100,000 of dollars. I didn't understand at all. But when I start to participate in different webinars and seminars, I understand that it need to learn before I reject something. And I found new strategy. In this time, it was very popular strategy, rent to own. And I start investing in rent to own. I bought probably in one year, I bought three houses for rent to own. And I invest total maybe $30,000 for all three houses. How? We have different strategy how to use money of others. After that, I also did joint venture for rent to own, and I start to build my portfolio. And when I accumulate all these knowledges, uh, knowledge from seminars, from the books, you can see behind me a lot of books that I read. I understand that people, a lot of people exist around that don't know how to invest in real estate. It's like like me. And um, when I start to walk in downtown. I commute with Go Train. Probably everyone now work re remotely. Yeah, in our time was you need to commute. You know, going to Go Train, sitting one hour, and a lot of people around. But I read books. I read books and I did my exams. I received license for real estate. I start to work with Rockstar. Probably people know what what is a company. It's a very good company who is uh, teach how to invest in real estate. And I became top producer in this company in one year. Why? Because I start to teach people 
how to implement strategy, exactly what I implemented. I never teach people to do something that I didn't try before. Okay. And um, I open my company. I have right now my brokerage. We have 10 agents. Who is sitting here from my brokerage can wave? Oh, several people. Some people probably did not open camera yet. And um, I start to do seminars. Before I did seminars in person and probably some people who is right now at the webinar was in seminars. I did seminars in Improve, in uh, Improve Canada and in my office. But start COVID in March and we moved to webinar and I realized it's even better because people can sit here near camera, put nice jacket, not necessary to put pants, but it's convenient, yeah? <laughs> you can take coffee and sit and can relax and learn how to invest in real estate. You know, even yesterday we sold the house through the Zoom. Yeah, it's new technologies. And because I start to invest in real estate 10 years ago, I accumulate big equity that can after that reuse to, to buy more houses, okay? And today I'm going I'm not going to speak about everything about real estate. I'm going to speak how to increase cash flow in this market because I'm receiving a lot of the calls and people say, how can I create cash flow today if houses are so expensive? It's, it's easy. It's very easy because we need to be creative and we need to, to look for different ways how to increase cash flow and not to go with all stream of the people they go in and, and buying does no matter what, for example, coming with some marketing, say we have pre-construction condo and every one running to buy this pre-construction condo, even not doing calculation if it's worth or not. Okay, because it's nice and it's very nice prospects, you know, it's written, it's pool, you have fitness, but you're not going to use this pool. You're going to rent. And this pool just take from you cash flow every month on maintenance fee that's going to increase. Okay. Or for example, in 2017, it's also real estate was going up and people start to buy houses on million dollar, one and a half million dollar. And people call me and say, do you have something pre-construction, some houses? I will, what are you looking for? It doesn't matter. How does it matter? You're looking for yourself? Probably you want to live in some specific area. No, no, I'm going looking for investment. How can you can buy for $1 million house for investment? But is it going up? How do you know? I don't know. Somebody knows what will happen in real estate tomorrow? I'm not speaking even in one year, two years, three years. What will happen tomorrow? Nobody knows. But what we know, we know what is the rent today? What is the mortgage today? This, all, 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 all these numbers we, we know. I don't say we don't need to, to make money on appreciation. Of course, biggest money coming with the appreciation, but we need to wait and some time to receive this appreciation. We not need to, to receive appreciation in one year. If you want to receive in one year, it's split. It's different, different um, topic for seminar. Maybe next time we will do a seminar about flip. If you're going to invest, you invest for some time, okay? Some time. And cash flow help you to keep this property for a long time without to put to the property from your pocket. Who able today to buy a house and put from your pocket every month $500 or $1,000? Take any project of the condo today, do calculation, you will see you put $1,000 from your pocket every month. Let's assume real estate going down for 10 years. Are you ready to pay 10 years $1,000 from your pocket? No. You want to buy something what is more secure, something that you have exit strategy because you also want to see what happens if something going not in the direction that you define for you. And exactly about this one, 
our topic today. Okay, you ready? Let's start. Okay, I'll start first. Uh, I'm going to speak about how to increase cash flow. After that, um, we'll, uh, Cherry connected uh, to speak about real estate. She asked me, because she's very busy, asked me uh, what exactly windows she need to connect and, and, and speak about that. And on the end, Shelly will speak about how to invest in multi-unit and why multi-unit can bring you good cash flow and also you can build appreciation with multi-unit. People think maybe multi-unit uh, appreciation not exist. No, it exists because you need to know how to change something to up the value. Okay. My life was changed 10 years ago. And one of the reasons it's not only my pay stuff that I received every month and see 50% going to our beautiful government. It's also because I read different books and my first book was Rich Dead Poor Dead. Who read this book? When I read this book, I understand that everything that I learned before, I can take and put it to garbage. Because nobody teach us how to make money. Do you know somebody who was in, uh, I'm not speaking about university, even in school, and you learn about the money? We learn about the money only how it look loony, toony, only in this way, yeah? But nobody teach us what is the mortgage, what is the interest for the mortgage, what is the leverage, what is the cash flow? Nobody teach us. Why? Because government don't need that. They don't need that all people going to invest. They need people who is going to work also. And to start investment in real estate, many people say, I need money. No. Money, of course, we need. But we can find different way how to even invest without money if you want to do that. First of all, you need to change your mind. Because your mind not give you to go forward. Because your mind was learned in so many years that you receive money right away when you finish day. You worked one week, two weeks, you receive pay stuff. You did some job for somebody, I don't painting or something, you receive money when you finish your work. Sometimes you even ask for deposit. But you never learn how to make money on long term and how money can create for you money. This one need to change your mind. And because that you need education. Education, you can go to seminars, you can take book, you can join different webinars and learn how to make money. But some people don't want to learn and some people just want to learn. They learn, they read all books that exist in library or in chapters, but cannot take decision. But what we say always, theory without practice is just entertainment. And most of the people problem why they not decide to go and do something because they not trained to recognize opportunity. When I start to invest, I didn't know where to invest because when I call my realtor and ask where to invest, he immediately said, we have pre-construction condo or some pre-construction project. I say, okay, what else? What after that we are doing? You can rent after that. Okay, let's calculate. I did calculation. I have master degree on mass. I say, numbers is not working for me. And I, I realized that not only Toronto exists, exists different cities around. And I started to travel. I was in Hamilton, I was in Oshawa, I was in Barrie. I chose Barrie. And I bought my first house for $254,000. Today, parking in downtown costs something like that. But I bought house, three bedroom, finished basement, three bathroom, for rent to own. 
I rent out this house for rent on. People after two years decide not to buy, moved out. I have still have this house. This house probably cost around 650 today. It's four hundred thousand dollars. How long you need to work to have four hundred thousand dollars on the side without to put a lot of effort? But if you have five houses, it's two million. It's a lot of money, guys. If you take statistics from 2010 to, to 2020, for example, houses in St. Catherine or in Barrie was 200,000, today 600,000. Three times, 200%. It means that in 2030, it will be 1.8 million. People don't believe. I believe. I believe it will be happen. I remember when Nasdaq down in 2001 from 5,000 to 1,000. And I was in some seminar and somebody said, it will go up once again to 5,000. Say, I don't believe how from 1,000 to 5,000 can come. Say, he will go much more than 5,000. What is Nasdaq today? 12,000 something, yeah? Everything is going up. But it's not always going straight up. It's going up and down, up and down. And you need to be safe when it's going down. All people who bought houses in 2017, if they bought in the right strategy, they keep this house till today. People who bought on the peak, not in the right strategy, needed to sell and lose 100, 200, 300 thousand dollars. Yeah, most people, they even half million lose in, in this time. And I always say, price is what, not what you pay. To, of price what you pay, but value what you get. And I remember, I also was new when I bought this house for $254,000. I, I also negotiate, it was $260,000. I reduced $6,000, was so happy. 600,000, if you compare it to 600,000, it was today, it's not big money. Of course, it's, it's, it's nice to have some discount when you buy a house. And I said to my coach, said, $250,000 in Perry, are you crazy? It's a lot of money. I bought my townhouse in Thornhill for 450,000, twice bigger than this house. It's almost the same price for square feet. And today I understand why he said me to buy it. Let's see why it's happened. Why price is going up when people today lose a job? Let's see on green belt. Who knows who is green belt? Everyone knows. It's not Gucci belt, it's green belt. Okay. If you look, look to, to Greenbelt, for example, where is Burlington or where is New Market, we don't have land to build. It's almost done. Where we can build right now? In Brentford, Niagara, Waterloo Kitchener, Cambridge, Barrie. That's it. We, or we can go up. That will happen in Toronto. They start to build buildings. But people today understand. I will speak after that. Why building is not so good solution for their payment. People speaking why it's happened. Because immigration, yeah? But immigration now down, significantly down. During the market down, it was around 60% down on immigration. And we see on graph, immigration is down today. And uh, our government understand without immigration, Canada will not exist. And also to return back economics after COVID, we need people. We need to bring people. We need to bring high-skilled immigra immigrants. And 
But what, what happened? Border was never closed. Immigra immigrants continue to come even during the COVID. And we have different new policy that allow to people who is on work permit to receive permanent resident without to leave the country. Before I remember when my kids, when I came to Canada, my kids was tourists because they were born after I, I received visa. And when I did sponsorship for my kids, I needed to go to Buffalo and return back to do immigration. Now they said, we don't need to go out the country because we cannot go today out the country. You can receive right away permanent resident. But news that we received last month, 1.2 million people will come in, um, in three years. 400,000 people every year. And 30% from all these people will go to GTA. You can imagine 400,000 people will come to GTA in three years. I'm not speaking about international students, migration between provinces, people, kids also born sometimes during even COVID. We have some like natural growing. But we don't build so much houses. Condo now probably will crash. They stop to build condo. And people don't want to live today in condo. They're going out of the city. Where is it going to live? We, we don't have places. Interest. Today, interest rate less than inflation. What does it mean? If I will take $100,000 from the bank, and somebody probably has $100,000 under bed, in one year, I will have more money if I take from the bank, compare the money the sitting on, uh, in, in your pocket. Because bank today give you mortgage for less than 2%. Who believe that today we have inflation 2%? Even they put this on you that we have 2, 3%. I don't believe. If you're going to superstore or going to Home Depot to buy building materials, you will see building materials up 50, 70, 100%, sometimes even 200% up. It's only Home Depot. We will see other stuff also will going up. It will be much more than 2-3%, much more. And people say, how long can be so low interest? Probably it will go in cups eventually. Let's see history. We have low interest more than 10 years already in different type of economics. Today, economic change. It's not like in, in 1980 was 20% interest. It will be happen once, it will be not happen once again, because all countries now living in the debt. To put 20%, what will be ha happen with 20 trillion dollars? 20 trillion dollars, yeah, I, I believe, uh, debt of US. It's impossible. And I believe it will be going even more down. If you look at what was uh, during the Second War, it was also very low, around 25 years. And bank already said, three years, we're not going to increase interest. Where is this? Oh, Bank of Canada plans to keep interest rate near zero until 2023. You can imagine what will be with the prices in three years with 1.2 million immigrants and interest near zero. What will be happened with the prices of the houses? And people, when they all open all this border, a lot of people start to bring money. Immigrants will bring money because Canada is more stable than other countries around the world. What happened with rent? We know rent down in Toronto 
in some areas even 60 percent 16 percent sometimes even 20 percent down because toronto is looking like host today you know it's empty people afraid it's not only toronto it's a different city it's vancouver the same many cities people going out the big cities they understand something changed in the life we can work remotely we even doing seminar today remotely why we cannot work remotely some people afraid maybe productivity to work remotely will be less than the working in, in the office i don't think so because i will sometimes work from the home when i was software engineer because people don't want to spend two hours to commute two hours from the life every day they happy to work remotely and company don't need to spend a lot of money for offices also and what is happened prices in toronto are going down but city around it's going up i remember last seminar i said that um very it's number five in canada for amounts of rent now we're not number four from all cities in canada very number four for amount of rent that you can charge for one bedroom or two bedroom apartment number four who is higher toronto vancouver and born by in, in in British Columbia. That's it. Rent in Berry higher than Montreal in, in Ottawa. New Ottawa in Berry. Why it's happened? Because not enough inventory. And what happened with the house prices? They going up. What happened with income? It's almost flat. And if people, for example, in 1980, difference was not so big between income and house price, you can see, if you see it's only two, till 2016, you can imagine 2020 with something here. Our kids probably will be live in rent forever. It's like in Europe. In Europe, a lot of people never buy house because they cannot buy house. And of course, rent will go up because inventory will be not enough because more and more people will be rent. And also what we saw in the news, over 60% of Can Canadians say they prefer to work remotely even after COVID. People already learn how to work remotely. And a lot of company will work only remotely and some company maybe 50 percent or some percentage will be work remote let's see what happened conda this freehold i'm speaking about town, uh, toronto right now prices in toronto in one year from october 2019 till october 20 up 20 percent Average sold price in Toronto Condo down from 703 to 684. It's not big, but down. It's just start. And if you will see this table and this uh, graph, this how what is inventory, and this is the uh, prices. When inventory is low. It's seller market. Today, in September, we also on balance market, but in October, Conda going to buyer market. For example, some Conda now for sale, very, very long time, even cheap. Houses, for example, in Berry, what is the cheap houses with the price we can compare to the condo receive 20 offers what happened in the berry 
it's October. House price is going 18% up. But if you will take detached, 20% up. And Conda, it's 4.7% up. And, and very Conda still going a little bit up. If you compare it to Toronto, it's 17% up. Total houses in, in Conda. Okay, I finished a little bit economic updates, but let's see what we can do in this situation. How we can create our wealth when we don't know what happened in economics in next months or years. I, answer is very simple. Exactly same what we did before. I also said we need to buy good houses in good areas it need to be houses what i can define first time home buyer houses these houses that people buy first time when they start to buy houses it's new families new immigrants uh, usually it's like small small house in periphery or townhouse in um, gta it can be a small house it can be duplex and it can be multi-unit why because these houses is more easily to rent, more easily to sell, and not easy to buy today. Today to buy it's very difficult. Right now I'm going to show you different examples. And I can say all these examples from the MLS today. It's not some history. It's from today MLS. This house that came to the market today or yesterday. And on Saturday, we are going to see these houses. We are going to like tour to the people. And if somebody wants to join this tour, on the end, you can send me a message or email, connect with me, and I will, I will send you to the tour. But please do this as soon as possible because today with the COVID, we have limited amount of the people who can enter to the house. We have many agents we can divide to the groups, but still we have some limitations. Okay, let's see example with what I define first time home buyer house, townhouse. Okay, townhouse $550,000 in value today. Last year it was 400. It's not 20%, even not 30%. It's almost 40%. Up. Okay. $550,000 townhouse. We need down payment 20%. We have mortgage, we have property tax, we have insurance. All our expenses is $2,065. If you rent for $2,150, you can imagine townhouse in very $2,150. In 2016, I remember we rent out it for 1350 It's $800 up. It's around 65% in seven years, around 10% per year rent growing. We have $85 cash flow. We have also mortgage down because part portion of your mortgage is going toward your principal. And total, you have $970 per month, your profit. I'm not speaking right now about appreciation, about uh, uh, other stuff. It's almost $12,000 per year you have uh, every year in your investment. If you see you put $110,000, it's 10%. It's good money. If house going price will going up 10%, you have additional 50% up from your money. It's already will be not 10% 10% error, it will be 60% error. But I'm not speaking about that because we are not going to speak today about appreciation. Appreciation we will receive. Everyone will receive appreciation, I guarantee. I'm not guaranteed it will be received in one year or two years or three years, but in 10, 15, 
20 years, prices will be minimum double, maybe more. Now you can imagine, if you have $550,000 and you put $110,000 down, even from your credit line, in 25 years, people going to pay rent, On the end, it will be mortgage free. You understand? And if price will be it will double, I'm not speaking about three times, four times, double, you'll have $1 million in your, in your equity from zero if you took all the money from your credit line. What happened with these lines? I don't know. Let's we'll stop and do one second. Okay, another townhouse. I'm not going to once again on the numbers. It's approximately the same numbers. This townhouse right now for sale in Berry. Same picture. But let's speak about how to increase cash flow. Everyone wants to increase cash flow. This house came to the market today. $600,000. If you're going to buy this house and put 20% down, you will have cash flow $100. Once again, mortgage down, it's almost $1,000 per month. Exactly the same like townhouse. But you can convert this house to the duplex. You can put additional $40,000, $50,000, convert to the duplex. And in this case, rent already will be $3,200. And $900 cash flow from 100 to 900. It's a lot. It's nine times. Mortgage down will be same. And if you'll do calculation, it's 74% up your income. I'm not speaking about appreciation right now. But what do you think if uh, prices will go down? Duplex will go down exactly same like townhouse, for example? No, because he brings money. And history show us if price is going down for sale, Rent is going up because if people buy less, they rent more. If they rent more, we need more inventory. No inventory, price is going up. 2017, exactly was the example. Prices went up or went down. Rent was ridiculously going up. Almost double rent. Same house like this one. Exactly same prices, almost same. He's right now listed for less price, but we have put something for uh, easy calculation. It's $600,000, same, same cash flow. Is it good investment? If somebody don't want to build duplex, you can buy already duplex. We have this house, it's listed for multiple offers. But approximately, I know what is the market price. It's around $750,000. And if you buy this house, you don't need to build nothing. You just need to rent out and receive almost $700 per month cash flow, plus mortgage down $1,220. And you total receive exactly the same that you built, $1,800, no, $900. And this almost same, $1,900. Exactly the same. But you have less money to um, total. Okay. Okay. I almost finished. Um, I have website capitalrealtybrokerage.com. It's my. It's it's uh, my website. You can go to this website capitalrealtybrokerage.com. You can find cities that you like. Define um area 
and you start to receive houses in your inbox every day. But understand, people is different and uh, they need to build strategy. And most important when you're going to start invest in real estate, it's not just to go and buy the house. Everyone can go and buy the house. Most important to build strategy. You need to define goals and build strategy, not to buy one house and say, okay, I finished. You need to define strategy, how to build your financial wealth, how to be financially independent. It's not just to buy one house. You need to build strategy. And you, need to, you can build strategy with me, with mortgage agents, with your accountant, with uh, other specialists can help you to build the right strategy. And what I'm doing always by end of seminar, you can go and sign on calendly.com Toronto Forum 30 minutes. You can sign for um, consultation, okay? I'm going to, uh, to I'm going to send you uh, by email. I don't want that you start to tape right now this um, uh, consultation. Uh, I will send you by email possibility to sign for 30 minutes consultation with me you, uh, through the Zoom. We can speak through the Zoom uh, to define your strategy. And also I will send you a link to sign for real estate tour in Berry on Saturday to go and see these houses that was on PowerPoint. And also probably will be new houses as well. And I'm not sure, but maybe we can even go to some houses that now on the middle of renovations on conversation to the duplex. If you have access, we also can go and see how it's going renovations to understand what is the process. We already did may, probably in, in very, maybe around 70, 80 duplexes. I have by myself three duplexes in Barry, and um, we know all, all flow from the start to the end. What is the end? Cash flow. No, end is financial freedom. Okay. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, I, I can answer maybe five, 10 minutes to the question. Let's see if Cherry is here. Cherry, yes, I'm here. here. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I hear, but we don't see you. Um, I'll turn oh, off my camera. See. But only I, when I do the presentation, I'm going to turn it off. I'm using my cell phone. My home internet is really bad. So I'm just trying to be as long as possible. And I can no, help you with internet. No interruption. I can help with internet on the future. Okay. okay. Um, so I'll let yeah. you answer your questions first, okay? Yeah, okay. If presentation. you have any questions, maybe five five minutes I will answer to the questions, but much better if you can sign to one in one consultation because some people probably don't want to, to ask everyone here the maybe answer. Okay. Let's see. Oh, it was so many. Okay, they ask a lot, lot, lot of questions here, but let's, see, let's see, open chat. Okay. Free holds, what do you mean? Well, some people, some, some agents from my, 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 my company already answered for many questions on chat. Yeah, I think we answered most of them. Okay. Is it legal to convert to the duplex? Absolutely, yes. But you need zoning that allowed to do that and also layout that allowed to do that. But almost uh, all municipality around um, reduce uh, now uh, all limitation for duplexes because we don't have enough inventory for rent. And for example, in Berry, almost everywhere you can convert house to the duplex, doesn't matter what is the zone. Okay. 
also in very, not only very many uh, many uh, cities around you can even build house on backyard imagine you have house you can rent this house for two thousand dollars maybe two thousand two hundred dollars per month you build another house and rent also for two thousand dollars per month and when you build this house you you receive rent you don't need to put nothing from your pocket we have different strategies how, how to, to create positive cash flow. Okay, what else? Regarding this to employee preferences, if you to all major companies want their employees back to the office as soon as it become. Okay, I don't know where people take statistics that everyone want. For example, Microsoft closed 800 stores around uh, North America, 800 stores, and all store has employees. Okay. Why? Because everyone going today to computer and can buy Microsoft stuff online, and not only Microsoft doing it. Maybe some companies want uh, people back, but a lot of company will continue to work remote. A lot of companies. Okay. What else? That's one question. Is it? Oh, if cash flow is so reliable, why I continue to work in real estate? Because I don't have enough cash flow for, for my needs right now. Everyone has different needs. Some people maybe not $5,000, some people maybe need $20,000 per month. Okay. But uh, yeah, I'm continuing to work in real estate, but also I'm not just working in real estate. I create business, I create company, and I teach people how to invest in real estate. And uh, I don't say if people create real estate, they don't need to do nothing. It will be very boring to sit at home and not do nothing. I enjoy to, to help people uh, to buy properties. I enjoy to do seminars. I'm already doing seminars seven years. I have TV programs. I have my own magazine. I enjoy to do it. I like that. Oh, it's good. Till tenants pay rent. Okay, regarding pay rent, nobody said it's real estate. It's so easy. Okay, if it will be easy, everyone will be do only real estate. Yeah, it's headache. Real estate it's also headache, but it's worth money. I just show you example how I create four hundred thousand dollar from one house. And if I will not receive even rent somewhere. And lost some two, three, five thousand dollars, it's still worth. Also, Cherry will explain it's also tax deductible, all your losses. And it will be not exactly loss that you receive, it's your loss. Okay. It's maybe 50%. But once again, regarding the rent, and I saw a lot of stories, if you choose right tenant, it will be probability to have better tenant low. And most important, you need to choose right property because right property will attract right tenants. If you're looking for the bad property, doesn't matter what is the kind of property, but just cheap property, you will receive cheap tenants. Okay, it's it's uh, it's process. Okay, let's. Uh, I will give to Cherry uh, to start, and on the end, if we will have time, I will answer for other questions. Okay. Okay, so should I get started or should I? Yeah, yeah, Cherry, you okay. can start. Okay, so let me see if I can share my screen. Um, so can everyone see my screen? Yes. I think so. Okay, that's awesome. So, um, okay, so um, I hope I'm still on. Uh, I hope uh, everyone is having a good time right now. I know you guys are learning a lot from uh, the secrets of, from Alex on the secrets of uh, investing in real estate. Uh, one of the biggest hurdles in terms of investing in real estate and cash flowing property is definitely the tenants. But the second hurdle that you would um, uh, hit if you want to build a portfolio that you could lift off uh, or even passing off to your uh, next generation would be um, to 
borrow money from the bank. And tonight, what I'm going to share with you is a strategy that I discovered very recently um, to borrow more money and to get those uh, really good rates out there and still qualify with the A lender and get those really good rates. And today, my presentation is about how to stay a mortgage version while owning five properties. Uh, my name is Cherry Chen. I am. Um, I have this gift to, for everyone. If you want to download it, um, I prepare a video recording of the top 12 tax deductions and you should not miss as a real estate investor. And you can download that, um, that uh, today's webinar slide together, get a link to our video at realestatetaxtips.ca slash gift. So that's the link. Um, let's get started. My name is Cherry Chen. I am a mom. I'm uh, a real estate accountant. I own my own accounting practice and my accounting practice only works with real estate investor. I'm a real estate investor myself. I also do a lot of, uh, a lot of stock trading. Uh, I also author a book called Complete Taxation Guide to Canadian Real Estate Investing, which went on to become the Amazon best-selling author. Uh, I, so you can follow me on uh, my Instagram and my Facebook and also YouTube is also Real Estate Tax Tips. If, if you search it, um, you would be able to find me there. Now, disclaimer, today I'm going to share some strategy that is very, uh, not very exclusive, but it's just relatively unheard of. And um, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a mortgage broker, I'm just sharing what I've learned and it seems to be working for a lot of investors. Um, so make sure that you pay attention to my presentation. Now, um, the number one question that I get asked all the time is whether they should set up a corporation, whether real estate investors should set up corporation to invest in real estate. And typically I come out with uh, at least two to three, uh, six questions to decide whether you should incorporate or not. And I'm going to go through that uh, fairly quickly. Uh, number one question is, what is it? Uh, what is your investment strategy? Um, a lot of you I see uh, from the chat that are talking about pre-construction condo. Uh, some of you are doing flips. Some of you are doing land development. Some of you are even doing rent to own. Um, all these strategies are considered to be um, income. What it means is that when you put, uh, when you make some money from selling the property, uh, using flip as an example, if you purchase a property for five hundred thousand dollars and you put in a hundred thousand dollars to renovate, so your purchase price plus your renovation is six hundred thousand. When you sell it for eight hundred thousand, that additional two hundred thousand profit that you make is hundred percent taxable. If you are um, if you are investing in flips and never rented out the property, chances are these profit, the $200,000 in my example that I mentioned, it is considered uh, income, 100% taxable. If it is being added to your personal income in your tax, uh, personal income tax return, it could be taxed pretty heavily. And as a result, um, it is often advisable to set up a corporation to own flipped assignment deals, land development, rent to own, because they are all considered income. And therefore, if you want to own them in your personal, in the corporation's name, it, when these, uh, the same $200,000 are earned in a corporation, um, the tax rate for in the corporation for Active business income is only 12.2% in Ontario, whereas the highest marginal tax rate in Ontario is 53.5% uh, right now. Now, um, so it really, whether you should set up a corporation really depends on whether you should, um, uh, uh, what your strategy is. Now, if you are more interested in the long-term buy and hold, you're talking about legal duplex, you're talking about student rental, you're talking about single family home and commercial properties, and you're doing long-term buy and hold for condos, um, that would be a different strategy. And there may or may not be any benefit to set up a corporation depending on your particular situ situation. Now, second, re second consideration to set up a corporation is do you want the legal protection? I know uh, a lot of people are saying that, um, well, for, for those of you who don't know, corporation is considered a separate legal entity. It can enter into contract, all liabilities, sign a uh, mortgage commitment paper, file its own tax on its own. Um, what it also means is that uh, when this uh, legal person, the separate legal entity, the corporation, uh, what it means is that um, you the corporation itself can be sued or be sued, can sue other people and be sued on its own uh, without the effect on the personal, on the shareholder itself. 
Now, if you're not familiar with the terminology that I'm using, I often use the, um, the terminology, the comparison uh, with TD Bank. If you own TD Bank stock, uh, you are the shareholder of the company. But if TD Bank gets sued, and I'm sure big corporation gets sued or suing other people all the time, it won't affect you personally as a shareholder. It's, the, uh, it's TD Bank as a corporation is being sued and chances are they would have their uh, litigation liability fund already set aside for that type of a lawsuit because that's just part of running your business and having your properties owned in a corporation means that if you ever get sued from the properties with any properties related situation you would limit the liability within the corporation it has nothing to do with your personal uh, personal home uh, primary residence your rsp money your tfm money uh, it will all be belong to the corporation. You shelter that shelf, uh, you shelter that risk within the corporation structure. And that's what it means by having that legal protection. Um, some of you mentioned in the chat that there are quite a bit of, um, some of you mentioned in the chat that um, tenants could go a little bit um, uh, erratical at times, and they could, and sometimes it's helpful to have that extra layer of legal protection uh, going for you. And that's one other factor to decide whether you should set up a corporation or not. Now, the third factor is that um, it's whether you're planning to buy more than one property. Uh, it matters if you are thinking of only buying one property and one legal duplex, and chances are it's not worth it to set up a corporation. The reason is because there is set up cost of the corporation and there is a, uh, an ongoing maintenance cost of the corporation. Every year you have to file the tax return. A corporation is considered a separate legal entity and therefore it can sue people and be sued, but it also means that you have to file that um, tax uh, return every single year. And by setting up a corporation, um, you have to pay the $2,000 to file the corporation tax return. If you're, you're not planning to buy more than one property for one duplex to absorb that $2,000 of cost, it may be expensive in some people's eyes. In some other people's eyes, it may not be expensive because you may treat it as uh, an insurance against your personal, uh, uh, personal only own properties. Um, now, do you own an other small business? It matters. Um, I own, uh, so as uh, Alex as well, I own several businesses on my own and those small businesses only pay 12.2% active business income. And so if I earn $100,000 in my business, I only pay $12,200 12, to CLA. And that means I have 87,000 uh, $87,000 left to invest in the corporation. If you own a small business on your own and you don't need to take all the money out from your corporation to support your lifestyle, it makes sense to invest in the corporation because you're investing in a low tax rate environment. It allows you to have much more available to invest. Imagine that same $100,000 that's earned in your personal name or in the corporation and you take it all out and invest in your personal name, you have to, to then pay another layer of personal income taxes to invest. And the pie would be smaller because CLA also want a piece uh, in your personal name when you take money out from your corporation. And so the pie to, for you, available for you to invest would be much smaller. And therefore, small business owners out there, it is much easier to invest and there is much more available for you to invest uh, within a, a corporation structure. Um, essentially, you're using CLA's money uh, that you would otherwise pay in your personal side, personal income tax uh, side, uh, to invest for your behalf, on your behalf. And so the ultimate decision factor is how much money do you need personally from your small business so that it would allow you to, um, it, it would allow you to buy, um, to, uh, to have extra savings left in the corporation to invest. Now, typically, the last question that we ask is, are you planning to leave your portfolio to the next generation? Now, the reason why it's so important is because sometimes when we do, um, when we are trying to leave our assets to our next generation, um, it, the plan that we use, most accountants would use is something, it's called the tax planning uh, strategy that's uh, call is called estate freeze. And the estate freeze typically involves the use of corporation. Now, if you start off investing in real estate using your personal name, 
I started off investing in my personal name first, and I own three, four properties in my personal name. Now, for me to leave these assets to the corporation and, and, and make sure that I am paying the least amount of taxes, I can do the estate freeze. What I do the estate freeze by uh, to um, using a corporation to do the estate freeze and transfer it to my kids, um, I have to transfer my personally owned assets to the corporation. And when I do that, um, of course, I trigger a bunch of fees. I trigger the land transfer tax. Land transfer tax uh, on my Toronto townhouse, it's expensive. It is double the land transfer tax and it's worth quite a bit right now. Um, so I have to um, I have to pay for that land transfer tax in order to achieve the estate freeze and allow me to transfer my assets to my kids on a tax efficient manner. And that's not typically talked about, but that is one consideration as to whether you should set up a corporation or not. Um, if your plan, long term plan is to transfer all these to your kids, um, eventually you'll have to use a corporation to do the transfer. And when you use the corporation to do the transfer, um, triggering the land transfer tax could be quite expensive. Um, now, there is no one size fits all at solution. Understand your priority, your situation and consult with a professional accountant. Now, but this is also, you can say hi, Bruce. Um, mommy's doing a presentation, okay? Um, so, so th these are usually the six factors that I go through with my clients in terms of deciding whether they should set up a corporation or not. Now, recently, I found my seventh, uh, seventh decision factor as to whether you should set up a corporation or not, which came, which will bring us back to my story. Uh, my story is um, this couple. Um, they are my friends. They're from my university friends. And they, uh, the wife uh, works at uh, an accounting firm and she makes about six, she makes six figure salary at her day job. The husband works for a software company, also an accountant, and he also makes decent amounts of money, also a six figures day job. Their combined income would be over $300,000, combined family household income. Now she, they already, they are, they were already brought up to be um, real estate investor. They own their primary residence in Toronto, which is, I'm pretty sure, similar to your particular situation. They own the primary residence. It has a fair market value of 1.6 million. Doesn't have any mortgage on it. it has a one million dollar uh, line of credit with TD Bank. They also own a couple of condos. One of the condos were um, they, they used to live there uh, before they moved to the townhouse. Um, and then the other condo was a smaller condo in Scarborough that they own for a very long time. Now they own these with TD Bank and Scotiabank. And all these properties are owned directly in their personal name, okay? Now, after attending real estate event like this, um, they decided that it's time for them to venture out of their condo comfort zone and then decided to go out to Kitchener to buy three properties in a corporation. Now, for those of you who don't know, Kitchener is actually a super hot market. Um, it's probably not worthwhile fight going in at this moment. Um, it's, it's crazy how, how crazy, uh, how hot the market has been over there. Now, um, when they decided to buy three properties in Kitchener, it, they decided to set up a corporation to buy these three properties directly inside the corporation's name. Now, you may work with mortgage broker out there that would tell you, well, it is really difficult um, to qualify for financing within a corporation. So one of the biggest questions that I get asked was that, um, how would they qualify? How would anyone qualify for a mortgage directly inside a corporation? So if you talk to the mortgage brokers, they would tell you, well, it is difficult to qualify for financing in the corporation. It is best to do it in your personal name, buy them in trust for the corporation. What is buy them in trust for the corporation? Now, what is that trust? Um, what is buy them in trust for the corporation? What it means is that um, they are referring to the leverage um, of this document, this concept that would separate the legal ownership from the beneficial ownership of the property. There are two types of ownership when you own something. Um, uh, something. There are two types and one is called legal ownership. So if I use your primary residence as an example, legal owner means that you are the one that is on title, signing all the official paper. They are the legal owner. Beneficial ownership represents um, you live there, having right, enjoying the benefit of living in the property. 
So majority of the time, the legal owner equals beneficial owner. But there are times that do not, uh, that these two do not equal each other, especially in bigger real estate deals. Uh, when two corporations come and join me and buy something together, chances are they are not the same. Now, what does that really mean? Um, what it means is that the, uh, the mortgage brokers out there would tell you as real estate investor, you'll buy a property in your personal name and you would sign something called a trust agreement. You're not really the one that's buying the property. Essentially, the real estate holding company would be the one that's enjoying all the benefit. So you need to sign a trust agreement de declaring that you don't own the property as really the real estate holding company that you own that would uh, report all the income and expenses, have all their liabilities and um, um have the right to receive the capital gain. So that's what this trust beneficial ownership trust agreement means. You can buy it in your personal name, qualify for mortgage using your personal name. Mortgage shows up on your credit report, which is very important. Mortgage will show up on your credit report. But even though the, the actual asset is owned by the real estate holding company. Now, it's, you still would be able to get the liability protection that we mentioned earlier. It's just that the mortgage still shows up on your um, uh, credit report. Now, accountants would tell you that if you set up a corporation, the most preferred option is that both legal title and the beneficial title are in the corporation's name. So if I have Cherry Chen Real Estate Investment Inc., I want to buy my property directly in Cherry Chen Professional Inc.'s name, and I will also want to qualify for the mortgage directly inside Cherry Chen, uh, Cherry Chen Real Estate Inc. Now, I don't, as an accountant, I would tell you, a uh, trust agreement is uh, acceptable by CLA, but if I have a choice, I would prefer to be um, under option one, um, both legal title and beneficial title belongs to the corporation. Now, uh, your, all your transactions must go through the corporations and to prove the legitimacy of the trust agreement and trust relationship. So everything is owned directly by the corporation, even though you own it through a trust agreement. Now, um, so this is what accountants would say, and lawyer would say that they prefer to have the legal title and beneficial ownership directly belong to the corporation. So then there is no trust agreement, no complication, and this is the best um, way to cover your, essentially cover yourself. Now, so what did my my uh, what did my friends do in their particular story? They went out on a buying spree and bought three rental properties in Kitchener. Uh, it's a few years back, but they bought three in the same year. Now, what he, they did is that they went to CIBC, which is a bank that worked directly with the corporation. They went to CIBC, and the corporation is um, both the legal owner and beneficial owner. So they qualify. They buy it directly in the real estate holding company name. Um, they also qualify for financing using the uh, real estate holding company name, but then they are required, they're asked to provide a personal guarantee on the mortgage. So the funny thing is that that happened and they got their 80% loan to value on the house number three, they only got 70% loan to value, which is not bad. Um, so she's been holding these three properties for a number of years. And what she didn't discover is that even though she owned all these properties in her her corporation, she didn't she didn't realize that um, these properties mortgage were not registered in their personal credit report. So if you look at their personal credit report, it would only show up to own three properties, the two condos and their primary residence. These three properties they don't show up on their personal credit report, which means that is it looks like from their financial picture that they don't own these three properties. And they also do not have the debt obligation for these three properties. Now, now then they went out to buy house number four for $700,000. This is not even a legal duplex. And they bought this $700,000 earlier this year. And they are still putting in the spending $120,000 to put in the legal basement suite, just like uh, Alex mentioned earlier. Um, she went back to CIBC again, and CIBC said, well, we would all based on the fair market value rent of this uh, co this property, we would only be able to lend you 30% loan to value with the same bank. Unfortunately, they need more than 30% to, um, to uh, purchase this property. They don't want to tie up so much of their line of credit in just this particular property. So they then went to traditional mortgage broker. And the mortgage broker said, hey, 
I looked at your personal credit report and your personal, the husband and the wife personal credit report. We don't find the, uh, we don't find the credit, um, we don't find the um, mortgage of these three properties. Um, so you could just like what normal mortgage broker, independent mortgage broker would say to them, you can qualify both of you with your income qualify to buy this house number four in your personal name because it appears as if they don't have any um, properties other than these three. So based on their income, they would be more than sufficient, have more than sufficient income to support house number four purchase, which works out to be perfect. And this, this qualification allows them to purchase this property with 80% loan to value. Now, what they did is that they, um, um, I mentioned earlier, the mortgage broker pulled their credit report and showed no record of house number one to house number four. So then Scotiabank is willing to finance their sixth house purchase based on their salary, 80% loan to value. And what they did is that they used a trust agreement um, strategy to own these properties in the corporation. Now, the mortgage broker, so this allowed them to buy house number five. And what their plan is, they are going to renovate the basement uh, get maximum amount of rent and transfer that property to the corporation directly and get the mortgage removed from their name again. Now with the trust agreement, the funny thing, not the funny thing, the interesting part about the trust agreement is that if you have the trust agreement set up at the, from the very beginning uh, of time to own the, uh, own the property in trust for a corporation, when you do the legal title transfer from your personal name to the corporation's name, there is no land transfer tax being triggered. So this is the reason why um, the strategy works. Essentially, you, all you need to do is you can transfer some of the properties that you personally own to the corporation, especially those that you own in trust for the corporation. And then you can re, um, and then you can use your own personal income to continue to qualify for more financing. And so you would then be able to buy uh, house number six and number seven Continue, wait for 45 days after you refinance house number five in the corporation's name, rinse and repeat for future purchase. And this is the reason why a lot of people in my uh, network are trying to transfer their mortgages to the corporation, trying to transfer some of these properties to the corporation so that they can continue to expand their real estate portfolio. And this is the seventh reason why people are setting up corporations to own properties in, their pers uh, in the corporation's name is if your goal is to buy more properties. Now that basically conclude um, my whole presentation. And I just wanted to share this strategy with you, how you can grow beyond the five properties that, uh, that seemingly would be the roadblock to uh, growing your real estate portfolio. Anyone have any questions? And and, and, and of course you are more than welcome to go to my website to download my, um, my free report. Anyone have any questions? Uh, let's see, let's see, let's look chat. at the uh, at the chat. Some uh, people wrote some uh, questions in the chat. I'm trying to open it right now. Okay. It's at the bottom of your screen. Oh, okay. Um. One second. Uh, I, I can I can read uh, one was question. Will there, there be issue when selling the property from corporation? Sell the property to the corporation? From, from corporation. Uh, sorry, one second. I will show them the strategy. Here. Um, so um, your question, sorry, uh, can you repeat the question again? One second. They wrote so fast. Let me just read the question that I see here. Will there be issues when selling yeah, the properties from the corporation? Um, there is. There are no issues selling the properties from the corporation. Um, when you sell the properties in the corporation, so if it is considered a long-term buy and hold, uh, it's still considered capital gain. 50% is taxable. The other 50% is not taxable. Uh, at the end of the day, there is um, similar tax implication as if you were to own the properties directly in your personal name. 
So how do you, Natalia asks, how do you get mortgage later in the corporation? So in my friend's uh, strategy, the way she's going to get uh, the mortgage in the corporation is based on the fair market value rent of the property. And typically the lender, um, if you work directly with the lender, they are willing to lend based on one, your income level, two is the uh, cash flow of the property. So cash flow property is uh, hugely important in terms of getting a mortgage directly inside the corporation's name. I hope that that answered Natalia's question. Uh, Alex is asking at what point are you able to use corporation to purchase additional properties? What does the bank look at? Um, I've had this conversation with multiple banks and, and almost, almost seemingly impossible to get the corporation to buy properties on its own unless you have a small business on its own and the small business is providing that corporation guarantee on the loan. So I, um, I went through um, uh, a conversation with Scotiabank private lending. They are willing to lend you money 60%, maybe 65% on the blanket, um, blanket uh, mortgage on your property, but it's not a lot. Um, and they always require personal guarantee on the loan. And if you ask me, I've got experience uh, working with someone in my early stage of my career. Um, they, it's a bunch of people, limited partnership, a limited, they form a limited partnership, probably about 20 doctors and dentists and professional form a limited partnership, bought a couple of plazas in commercial plazas. Uh, one is in Brent, um, uh, Burlington, downtown Burlington. The other one is in Stony Creek. And then the last one was in Waterloo. They came together and formed a limited partnership to buy the, um, um, the, the real estate um, plaza. And even with those type of properties, when you form a limited partnership and the investment is so significant, the bank is trying, still trying at that point, the bank is still trying to get a personal guarantee. And I remember the negotiation was that the, the, the mortgage would, would be increased to like maybe $2 million. And there is more than sufficient cash flow to cover the mortgage. And, and the bank still want personal guarantee from every single limited partner. There were about 20 of them. And they want personal guarantee for the entire loan amount from each individual uh, limited partner. So that's what the bank always want. When would they give that up? Chances that they would always want everything. Um, I think that is just part of the game, unfortunately. Now, Julia uh, asks, how long corporation is valid? Is it only for 21 years? The 21 years rule is really just for trust, family mm -hmm. trust. The corporation can sur uh, survive way past us. It can survive for years and years and years. TD Bank is still alive. Uh, some of these, uh, Sun Life, um, all these companies are still alive. That's because they don't have a day. Um, uh, if one already has some corporation for different purpose, can I use the same corporation for real estate business? Maybe um, one thing that you guys have to pay attention to when you are repurposing your current um, corporation for the purpose of purchasing your property is um, the bank, for some reason, they have some weird rule. When they work with corporation to qual that qualify to purchase, finance, uh, purchase residential properties, they want to see something called holding company. Now, what is holding company? Holding company is not the same as the holding company that is identified and defined in the Income Tax Act. In the bank's eyes, apparently it's Bank of Canada rules. I don't know if it is. I haven't seen the rules myself. I was told by some mortgage broker that holding company means that it's a company that has to own the properties only, cannot be used to earn um, any active business income. So if uh, I have this earlier on this year, I was trying to refinance a property that's owned directly inside the corporation's name. And at the final stage, uh, RBC decided to pull it out, pull out their um, uh, financing because I was not able to, because I earned uh, $2,000 of active business income in that corporation. You would have imagined that $2,000 would help you qualify for the, for the mortgage, but the reality is that you, like, they don't like it, unfortunately. Um, guy was asking, can I buy the first property myself and later set up a corporation and sell myself the property? So sell the corporation the property? Yes, ideally you don't want to do that because that could po potentially trigger the land transfer tax. Uh, it looks unreal to spend only 70, oh, okay. So that's not that uh, in the corporation. 
thank you, Alex. Uh, thank you for reading my book. Um, can the foreign corporation use this strategy? Someone is asking, can the foreign corporation use this strategy? Um, no, um, you, sorry, uh, you, a foreign corporation cannot be able, you would not be able to use a strategy. A foreign corporation, you will still have to file the Canadian tax return. And remember, they always need someone to file the taxes. Um, they always want a local Canadian residence. Otherwise, the bank is not going to lend it to you easily. Or you would be only, um, you would only be looking at, um, hmm, for some reason, I can't see the chat. Um, you would only be, uh, uh, you will be required, they would lend you very little. That's the, the, the next thing. If you don't have uh, someone that is uh, local, you, you would have to provide a lot of, um, a lot of down payment for it. Um, okay, I can't see the rest of it for some reason, the rest of the questions. Oh, right there, okay. Can you transfer, uh, uh, can the foreign, so someone, Alexi, is asking how to achieve legally active corporation status uh, for a prop, for a corporation that's earning rental properties income, uh, that rental properties income are considered passive um, because it's specifically excluded from being the definition of active corporation. Active, co active business income is considered everything everything is active except if it is re rental income interest income royalty income and um, dividend income so you don't have to achieve an active corporation status um, as long as you don't earn those income then your your income is being taxed as active income and only subject to 12.2 percent tax uh the team is asking can you transfer from corporation to personal name with Dow paying land transfer tax if you decide to take a mortgage on personal name. If you do decide to take the mortgage in your personal name, um, then you qualify for financing in your personal name. Your legal title belongs to you and you would use the trust agreement to own the property in, uh, in trust for the corporation. And that with the trust agreement, you would then be able to, um, you would then be able to uh, um, uh, transfer the property to the corporation later on when your bank allows it to the corporation without triggering land transfer tax. Andrew asks, if you sell property under corporation, do you need to charge HST? Do you need to pay HST to CLA? Okay, if you um, sell the property under the corporation, you do not need to charge HST and you do not need to pay HST if it is a residential property. Now, um, this is such a loaded question because there are strategies that if you build, um, um, if you build the entire house for rental purpose, you will have to pay HST. If you build a new home and sell it to a third party to use as a new home, there would be HST implication. But regular residential resale home that you buy and you just renovate to rent it out, typically and generally speaking, you don't need to charge HST at all. And there's no HST implication for residential rent, except Airbnb. Uh, will you lose on capital gain if you sell in the corporation? No, it is the same. If so, in the corporation, you need to pay additional tax in order to pull money on your personal account. Uh, it's not additional tax uh, because the CLA, uh, the income tax act is designed in a way that it has tax integration. What it means is that um, they would give you a bigger credit for the money that you pull out to, from the corporation to reflect that a portion of the tax has already been paid. Uh, Lexus asks, does the trust agreement to own property and trust for corporation need to be signed during purchase or can it be signed months after? Technically speaking, if you have the intention, that's good enough from the legal point of view. Uh, the trust agreement is a legal paperwork to make sure that you document that intention. But it, to, to have that trust agreement signed, it's, um, it just makes everything official. And if you want to make it as official as possible, make it that the trust agreement is dated at the time of closing. That's the most um, uh, effective way. Uh, I would say, will you be able to leave it to leave in a house purchase in your corporation, or there is needs to be a benefit fee? I'm not really sure what that means. Um, Alex asked, what would be the best way to pull money out of the corporation to your personal with the least amount of taxes that would need to pay apart from the 12% marginal tax? So it. None of the marginal tax rate is 12%. The 12.2% I mentioned is a corporation tax rate. Um, 
the best way to pull money out is first of all is to repay your shareholder loan so you can repay yourself the shareholder loan first if you invested a large amount into the corporation uh, let's say a hundred thousand dollars to buy a house you can pull that one hundred thousand dollar back out without triggering any personal income tax so you first repay us your debt uh, that the company owes to you and then when that is all depleted, then um, you would want to basically spread out the amounts that you pull out from every single year. We use a strategy called dividend sprinkling. Um, uh, and that is how it works. Now, um, hopefully that helps. And I think there are all the questions are answered. Alexi is asking how to register. Um, you can go to my website and send us an email. So you can simply con connect through with me um, through my website, which is realestatetaxtips.ca. Um, uh, I also sent recording and I will send uh, this link as well. Um, awesome. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. What prevents you from backdating the trust agreement a number of years back? Well, okay. So Alex asked a great question. You can't really backdate it legally. Uh, um, so the beneficial ownership, like let's say you, um, let's just go back, step back a little bit. We have a corporation here and you yourself here. If you own the property in your personal name and qualify for financing in your personal name, you have to, someone has to report the income and expenses and someone has to report the capital gain and asset and liability. So typically speaking, if you rent it in, in rent it out, someone has to report the income. Is it you that's reporting the income or the corporation that's reporting the income? So you need to look at the situation. If you always own the properties in your personal name, but the corporation has always been reporting the income and expenses and assets and liabilities and signing all the agreement of um, agreement, rental agreement and uh, and paying for all the bills. Even if there is no proper trust agreement, there is a trust relationship exists between you and the corporation. You are essentially buying, you bought it in trust for the corporation. That is one way to look at it. When you have a trust agreement later on and trying to sign a trust agreement to officially document that relationship, that's totally acceptable. Now, on the flip side, if you own the property in your personal name and you all you report everything in your personal name and you always have that corporation existed, and now you're trying to backdate your trust agreement so that you, your accountant would be able to qualify to report all the income and expenses of the properties in the corporation, it doesn't work. You have to always report everything and all the transactions has to go through the corporation. And this is the reason why I told you earlier that accountants would prefer the legal ownership and the beneficial ownership inside the corporation directly so that I don't have to educate my clients in terms of how to get that done. Uh, when you're transferring, uh, is it a fair market value or purchase price? Um, when I talk about the transfer of the property with the trust agreement, it would be, it doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter because there is no land transfer tax and there is no tax implication whatsoever. Um, what type of trust are you referring to? I'm talking about bear trustee. Uh, Alex is asking in a pre-construction arrangement, is it sufficient to sign the trust agreement at the time of closing as opposed to at the time of initial purchase since there is no expense to report between the purchase and closing? Um, in the perfect world, you should sign a trust agreement at the time when you sign the agreement of purchase and sale for pre-construction condo. That's just a given. Um, it, that's in the perfect world. And, and in the corporation, you would, even though there is no expenses and income, but there is a deposit being made. So if you have already put in uh, like $20,000, $50,000 deposit, the financial statement of your corporation would have shown that $10,000, $20,000 of deposit um, so that you, um, it all, whether you put in the money or the business pay for the $20,000, that's a right to purchase a property. And that is by reporting a $20,000 deposit in the corporation that gives the signal to CLA that you already have a trust relationship, that very trusty relationship happened. I'm not a lawyer, just to qualify, hopefully. Okay, uh, I think uh, we need uh, to go to, to the next speaker. Um, sure. Thank you, Cherry, very much. You was very, very valuable information shared with us. Um, I will send recording uh, 
in a couple of days and also link to a gift from, from the Cherry and all, all, all this stuff. You can sign to consultation with Cherry and uh, um, I can personally recommend her because I'm doing all accounting with Cherry for many years. <laughs> and um, yeah, and she's very, very knowledgeable accountant. Okay. Um, thank you, Cherry. Uh, right now we are switching to Shelly. Shelly, she's very experienced in multi-unit investment. She has, how many doors do you have, Shelly? Um, we have uh, 32 doors right now. 32 doors, yeah. And, and Shelly also helped for a lot of investors uh, to buy multi-unions and she's going to share information how to buy, yeah, how to buy multi unit is it correct? Uh, no, actually, I'm going to share information about uh, why multi-unit is a very uh, stable investment and can survive uh, the recession. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, so, go on. Uh, hang on a second. Okay, can you see my screen? Yep. All right, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Shelly Blank. Uh, like Alex said, I uh, am investing uh, in real estate uh, for a while now. Um, started around uh, 2010, nine, something like that. Um, and uh, currently, I own uh, about 32 uh, uh, units, um, some of them duplexes, some of them are uh, multi-unit uh, buildings in different areas. And um, I'm going to talk about, uh, about the multi-residentials. So uh, there are different ways to invest in real estate, uh, many different uh, kinds of real estate um, assets that people can invest in. Um, so there's the uh, single family residential, which everybody knows, duplexes like Alex uh, mentioned, the multi-residential office buildings, different commercial uh, properties, uh, farms, industrial, um, vacant land. So all kinds of different investments are available in real estate and each investor um, chooses which ones uh, they prefer. I'm going to talk about the multi-residential uh, today. So what is it? Uh, first of all, it's a property with multiple residential units like the name uh, implies. Um, and it's considered commercial when it has a commercial component like a store or an office uh, with residential uh, units and or it can be completely only residential units but it has to have uh, six or more units in one uh, property. Uh, it can also be mixed use. So you can have a store or office on the street level and some residential units above or behind. So there's many different combinations. Um, and uh, why I'm saying it's considered commercial because that is important for your financing uh, because for these kind of assets, you're gonna need uh, fi uh, commercial financing, which is a little bit different than the residential financing. Uh, so, like any anything, any kind of investment, any kind of business, there's always uh, pros and cons. Uh, so uh, the cons, uh, first of all, when you have multiple units, you have multiple tenants. Uh, uh, so it's a lot more headache. You have then when comparing to single family, okay? Um, and you're going, sometimes you need uh, large scale renovations, uh, which can take a lot of work or a lot of money. And sometimes uh, the purchase price is high, but on the other hand, uh, 
Did you see the prices on single residential in New York region? It's crazy in Toronto. So it could be the same price sometimes. So the pros, um, it's income generating, which is what we look for in investments. Uh, you have multiple tenants. It's also an advantage because you have less risk of losing rent when you have more tenants. Um, you have the commercial financing, which is an advantage, especially if you um, already reached your limit in purchasing uh, properties under your own name. Uh, corporation is uh, is not is not uh, not a corporation. Sorry, a commercial financing does not have a limit. You can purchase as many properties as you want with commercial financing, and uh, just as long as uh, the property's um, cash flow and the bank likes them, they will give you the money to buy them. So. Uh, the value is determined by the income of the property, which brings us to my favorite part. You can increase the value of the property by increasing the income, which is totally possible and also happens naturally over time when tenants uh, leave and new tenants come in, you raise the rents to the market uh, value and you increase the income. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to talk about how these kinds of properties are resilient in the face of economic turbulence. Um, so, like we see already in the market, uh, even before we had uh, economic uh, problems, uh, when people can't afford to buy, they rent. When you have a lot of, of population coming into uh, the area, when I'm saying the area, I mean all of the Golden Horseshoe. That's not only the GTA, that's all the Golden Horseshoe um, in Ontario. In, people just keep coming, immigration and uh, relocation. And uh, you, we don't have enough inventory uh, for people to live and the rents are going up the demand uh, for rents is always high because not everyone can buy a house. Um, when you have more units in the property, you can withstand a reduction in the rents. So let's say a recession hits us and we just, uh, people can, don't, doesn't have work, they can't afford even to pay the rent and you must reduce the rent in order to have, uh, so people will be able to pay. So when you have many units, you are um, more, you're able to withstand a reduction in the rent if you, if you must, easier than when you only have one or two units uh, in the property. And also when you have more units, uh, the cost per unit, on different expenses is uh, lower, uh, which I will show you in a minute. And as I said, when you have multiple tenants, the risk to lose rent is a lot smaller because even if one tenant doesn't pay, but you still have five more tenants or 10 more tenants, you still don't lose money. You still don't have to pay the mortgage and the expenses out of your own pocket. So let's talk about uh, rental vacancy rates uh, in Ontario for a minute. A vacancy rate is, is a percentage uh, representing the, uh, basically the, uh, the demand for rental units. So when we have more demand, the, uh, the vacancy rate goes down. When you have uh, less demand or when you have more, more uh, uh, inventory, then uh, the vacancy rate goes up. Uh, this is a, a graph showing, showing the uh, historic uh, vacancy rates, average vacancy rates in Ontario, in all of Ontario, not just the GTA. Uh, they, they vary a little bit between different areas and different uh, cities. 
different uh, population um, centers. But uh, this is uh, like uh, an overview of, of the entire uh, Ontario. Uh, you can see between 2000 and 2019, you can see how, how the vacancy rates go up and down. Um, and you can see the big, uh, the big uh, recession we had in 2008 and nine. You can see the 2007 and eight, sorry. Uh, you can see the uh, decline in the, in the vacancy rate. And then it goes up again, but you can see if you go closer to our time now, the, the vacancy rates are really low because there's just no inventory. There uh, hasn't been any significant building of uh, new, new um, construction of uh, purpose-built multi-units since the 90s. So only now when the rents went up so much and, um, and the vacancy rates are so low, um, only now uh, developers are starting to build purpose-built uh, multi-units for rentals um, only in the last two years or so, and it's still not, not enough. It's not enough. Um, so what causes low vacancy rates? So like I said, the low inventory of rental units, uh, the growth in population, and uh, the fact that home ownership is not affordable because the prices went up so much, no one can afford to buy a house or even a condo. Uh, and a lot of people cannot qualify for a mortgage, uh, especially young people who are just uh, starting out in life and they want to get their own place, they will have to rent. And people that are retired uh, also have problem to get mortgage. Um, and uh, a lot of people uh, will have to rent. So that uh, usually increases the rents and uh, you have a very low, um, low vacancy rates as a result of all that. Uh, by the way, the Ontario uh, rental vacancy rate in 2020 is estimated to be even lower and go down to 1.5%. That's really, really low. So like I said, uh, when you have more units, you can better withstand the reduction in rents if you have to. Usually the rents will just, well, they will go up up to a point, but uh, they just, uh, that's the way the market works. Uh, when you have more demand, the rents go up. But we were talking about uh, depression. So in case everything goes south and no one can afford and you have to reduce rents, I can show you that when you have more units, uh, you don't suffer too much if you reduce the rent. So in general, when you have more units, you have more income. It sounds straightforward, but let me show you uh, how the numbers work. So for example, uh, if we compare three buildings, I will have to make a few assumptions just so we can work with the numbers. Um, so if we assume the rents are identical in all the units, in all the buildings, and we say that the rent is 12, 1200 uh, a month per unit, then, and the total operating expenses for each property is 40% of the gross income. So that includes all of the expenses. So the property tax, all the maintenance, uh, if you have to pay for the utilities. So all of those things are all of them included in this um, operating expenses and 40% is pretty good. So this is what we see. Uh, if we have six units in the building, our yearly gross income will be 86,400 and the operation expenses um, are right here, which bring us to net income of 50, 
$51,840 a year before that service. So that's before you pay the mortgage, okay? We always calculate um, the net operating income before debt. And that's how the bank will look at it as well when they when we will go and ask for uh, financing. If I have eight units, my net income already goes up to 69,120. And if I have 12 units, I already reach $103,000 net income. So that's um, after expenses, but before that. So if um, we had really bad luck with the economy and we are forced to reduce the rent because no one can pay this amazing sum of $1,200 a month, um, if I reduce 10%, which is a lot, but let's say I, I had to reduce 10% of the rent, my net income uh, changes like you can see here. And you can see that still, if I have more units, I am still making nice amount of money and I can still survive uh, better than when I have less units. Okay, so the profitability, and you can look at it the other way around too, because if I had this rent and then my tenants, uh, left and I got new tenants in and I could raise the rents by 10%, which happens a lot, especially when you have uh, people who live there for several years. Then from this, I can go to this naturally without doing much, maybe just paint and do some small renovations. So, um, and also the profitability uh, rises when you have uh, more units because the total uh, expenses of uh, a lot of things are divided between the units. So the price per unit for those expenses are lower when you have more units. And I will show you that in a second. So expenses like uh, on-site superintendent, uh, snow removal, landscaping, heating system maintenance, structure or facade maintenance, uh, common area cleaning. These are all expenses that I will have no matter how many units I have in the building. So the same building that has six units will pay the same amount for these expenses uh, more or less like the building with the 12 units. So if I calculate per unit, I can see um, how much cheaper it is per unit if I have more units to pay for these expenses. So for example, if I had to replace the roof in the building, uh, the shingles, let's say the cost will be $7,000. So in the building with the six units, uh, each unit will pay 1166. In the eight unit, each unit will pay 875 for this roof. And in the 12 unit building, each unit will only pay $583. So you can see which, which property will cover this expense first, right? When I have more units, it's easier for me to cover uh, these, these kind of expenses. Um, and when I have more tenants, it's less risk for having no income, like I said before. Um, an investment is supposed to generate income. If it doesn't generate income, it's a liability. It's not an investment. So when you have a single tenant, you have a high risk of losing income. Like some people um, mentioned in the chat before, um, if a tenant stop paying or if they just leave and you're stuck without a tenant for a while, you can lose money. And uh, we don't like to lose money. We like to make money. So when you have multiple tenants, 
uh, you have you reduce the risk of of being stuck with no rent because, uh, like I said before, if you have 12, 12 uh, tenants and two of them are not paying, you still have ten other tenants who are paying, and you still um, not losing any money. You still uh, the the property can still carry itself and carry all the uh, expenses without you having to take money out of your own pocket to pay for anything there while you solve the problem or uh, find a new tenant to replace the ones that left. So a little bit about uh, how, to, how to increase the income. Um, I know it's late and uh, not everyone are familiar with this kind of calculation, but basically, um, in multi-residential and basically any commercial uh, property, the value of the, of the property is determined by the income. So if you can uh, take a look here at this, um, this, this thing here, it says the net operating income, so that's all of the income minus all of the expenses of the property, divided by the capitalization rate uh, gives us the property value, right? I will not explain the capitalization rate right now because it's late and <laughs> no one will be able to uh, make it. But it's basically um, the relationship between, um... okay, let's just go on. Uh, so, Basically, what we can see is that the property value is determined by the net operating income. So if you increase the income, you can increase the value of the property. So uh, even if we just change $100 a month of the, of, the, of the rent, you can increase the value of the property by $20,000 if the capitalization rate is 6%. So you can see that if only three units out of my 10 units or six units or whatever units you have, only three of them change the tenants and you increase the rent by $100 per month, your property value just went up by $60,000. And if you do renovation and if you had a long-term tenant who was paying like $600 a month and then when he left, you renovated and now you can um, rent it out at a full market value, which will be, let's say $12,000 to uh, $1,200, sorry you increase the value significantly and this can happen easily. You can find any other, uh, other ways to increase income by let's say charging for parking or uh, installing uh, coin laundry to, in to bring in more income to the property. So um, different investors have different uh, preferences and uh, each investor need to have their own investment strategy to, to match their unique situation, their unique goals, uh, requirements and risk tolerance. Not, uh, not every property is the right one for everyone. Um, and there are, you can, you can invest in single family, in duplexes, in multi-unit, in commercial, all of them can be a good investment for you, depending on your situation and what you are looking for, what are your goals in your investment strategy. And uh, the opportunities are out there. So you just need to go out there and find them and uh, make money. So thank you very much uh, for listening. I hope. Uh, it wasn't uh, <laughs> too much uh, 
too much uh, math today. I tried to keep it very minimum. Uh, so you are all very welcome to contact me if you would like to have a, a, a free 30 to 45 minutes uh, consultation session with me. Uh, we can discuss uh, your investment goals. You can call me, email me, you can uh, contact um, you can contact me through Alex if you can't reach me for some reason. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. Thank you, Shelly. It was very interesting information. Um, OK, we finished for today. I think it was very interesting today. 50 people was still on the call. Um, once again, I just sent email for everyone regarding consultation. You can book this consultation or you can put even in notes if you want to speak with somebody who is uh, was today or just with me. Doesn't matter. Uh, you can book uh, via Calendly. You receive this in your inbox. Also on, on Saturday, we are going to Barry to show this property that I gave example today, maybe even more. Uh, we have li limited uh, spaces already to people already signed, I saw. Uh, you can send uh, email to me, message, uh, reply to the uh, email, doesn't matter. Just say I'm coming and how many people. Okay, we finished for today. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. See you next time.